Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America, great to have you with us. The Ark's Cargo for the Love of Animals, the memoirs of a globetrotting veterinarian who has witnessed the very worst of mankind in his quest to care for the creatures that were chosen to be the Ark's Cargo. In a world full of violence and deprivation, one man, Dr. William Bish, has the courage to shepherd and safeguard God's most beautiful creations. His dream was to become a veterinarian. Challenges along the way, limited resources, even a period of homelessness, but nothing could interfere with his commitment to achieve success. Inspired by biblical passages and teachings, Dr. Bish cherished his work as an international veterinarian in the United States Department of Agriculture, known for his passion for improving the health and welfare of domesticated and wild animals. His experiences, some heart form, uh, heartwarming, some terrifying, some surprising, in his book, The Ark's Cargo for the Love of Animals, Dr. William Bish, our guest on This Week in America. Dr. Bish, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us today. Well, thank you very much. I love the book. So much to talk about. And let's start with the very basics on this. What inspired you to, to write this book? Well, malnourished children are still a common sight in many developing countries of the world. And yet, even in such situations, the generosity of their families to those of us offering our help to, in achieving a better future was remarkable. Working with them to improve their lives through animal health and God's help soon moved me emotionally to feel the need to share their stories as well as my stories of hope and expectation as an international veterinarian. Well, and it comes across, it's such a moving book, The Ark's Cargo for the Love of Animals. Dr. William Bish, our guest on the program, give you website information on uh, where to buy the book here in, in a few seconds on the program. Talk a little bit about the, the Ark's Cargo as the book's title. That's it's very interesting and very appropriate. Talk about how you came up with the title. Well, growing up, I lived part of my life on a farm, and of course there were all kinds of animals there on the farm, cattle, pigs, horses, even dogs and cats, of course. So my interest in animal stories is a given. In addition, uh, my grandmother loved telling her grandchildren stories, and especially biblical stories, and her favorite, favorite Bible story was that of Noah's Ark. And of course, these included lots of animals. She would even list as many as she could uh, come up with and think of and emphasize how they came on board the boat, two by two, of course, a male and a female of each species. As a result of my grandmother's stories and my life's work with animals, it only seemed natural to name my book The Ark's Cargo for the Love of Animals. And I love the book cover. The book, by the way, is available wherever books are sold. You can get information at Dr. Bish's website. That's William Bish, and that's B-U-I-S-C-H dot com, WilliamBish.com. Link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. You'll find it, of course, at, at Amazon as well. Tell us a little bit about the book. It's There's humor. There is uh, There are mystery sort of surprises. We're terrified a few times for you, some of the situations you found yourself in. Tell us a, b a little bit about the book, an overview of the book, The Ark's Cargo. Well, The Ark's Cargo is based on, of course, the life of an international veterinarian, me. It focuses on the people, places, and situational conflicts, joys, and experiences of one who truly in Enjoyed and cherished the work he was involved in. It is not based on theoretical possibilities, but rather on realistic opportunities that produce life-sustaining results. It's international in scope, and this includes stories based on, and there's quite a few countries, uh, Haiti, Panama, the Caribbean, Mexico, Colombia, Brazil, Korea, the Philippines, Mali, Ethiopia, Kenya, Senegal, Norway, Switzerland, and of course the United States. The Ark's Cargo describes working in the jungles of Panama, in Africa along the road to Timbuktu, 
as well as in Colombia under the watchful eyes of the drug lords, and that was so suspenseful. That had to be an interesting experience doing that, and a frightening experience, I would assume, as well. Right. And I uh, also had experiences where they, I was uh, walking along a path, and a native jumped out in front with a shield and spear, aimed what I thought was right for my heart, of course. <laughs> And uh, there were experiences uh, where I was being attacked by a battalion of troops, faced uh, all kinds of uh, issues with a fly factory, and uh, that's just some of the stories they're told. The stories unfold in the book The Ark's Cargo for the Love of Animals by William Bish, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. You'll find the book available at uh, at Amazon. Link on to Dr. Bish's website by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Besides all the countries you talk about there, you really treated a lot of, of diseases. I'm thinking maybe diseases that uh, most people, uh, many people, wouldn't even have heard of before. Talk about some of the diseases in different parts of the world that you had to treat. Well, one of the main diseases is quite common in the U.S. as well as in other countries, and that is brucellosis. It's caused by a brucella bordis organism, and it affects cattle and humans as well. In humans, it's called undulant fever. And uh, that uh, disease is discovered through a blood test. The other diseases that I worked with include tuberculosis, and that uh, is uh, found by a skin test where the, there's a tuberculin that they use and inject it into the skin, and after about 48 hours, they measure the skin thickness, and if it has increased, you've got a positive case. Some of the diseases that I worked with included hog cholera, that's uh, more commonly known as classical swine fever, African swine fever, a lot of pig diseases. Worked with a tsetse fly disease, trypanosome, which causes sleeping sickness in humans, and in animals they call it nagana. Other diseases include a mad cow disease, and you just say mad cow disease, and it brings shiver out, up your spine. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, avian influenza. Uh, now, mad cow disease is caused by uh, cattle eating meat from scrapie infected sheep. That's a disease of sheep, scrapie. By the same token, humans eating mad cow disease meat, uh, they come down with Creutzfeldt jacobs disease. So there's a lot of human connection with these diseases. And we'll talk about that as we go on during the program, the connection between the animals and diseases and humans and their conditions. That Fascinating. Read in the book, The Ark's Cargo for the Love of Animals. You talk as well about chick diseases. Talk about some of those. Well, the main one that I worked with was the tick called Amblyoma variegatum. And this tick uh, is probably interesting to know the tick have mouth parts and they have very, this one has a very large mouth part that they bite through the skin of cattle and that forms all kinds of lesions on the back of the cows. Well, the lesions are caused because the mouth parts are contaminated by a, a staph organism. And this uh, condition is called dermatophilosis. But uh, the tick also carries another disease and uh, Think about a disease that causes fluid to accumulate around the heart and lungs, and the name just seems natural. It's called heart water disease. With us on the program, Dr. William Bish, the author of The Ark's Cargo for the Love of Animals. You talk as well about screw worms and the impact they have on animals. Explain that. That's uh, that's frightening. Well, screw worms are, are flies but they have a larval stage in their uh, development. And these flies, they lay, oh, lots of eggs, about 250 to 300 eggs. And they lay them on cuts and abrasions and wounds that uh, 
animals or humans may have uh, on their uh, skin. Uh, these eggs turn into very hungry larvae. And the larvae live on the human and uh, animal flesh and eat the equivalent in 10 days, believe this or not, eat the equivalent of a soccer ball or a basketball. That um, alone will take and uh, cause the animal or human to die or the toxins that are associated with the, uh, the ticks themselves. To fight the screwworm problem, we produced uh, flies and sterilized them in what we call a screwworm production facility. And uh, during their development in the larval stage, we zap them with gamma radiation, which is just as the sex organs are developing. And that causes the flies being produced to be sterile. And when they are released, and we box them up, put them in an airplane, and release them in the air to uh, mate with the native population, being stable, they're being sterile. They're unable to produce any offspring, and uh, and that is how we have eradicated the screwer from this part of the world. You mentioned some of the, the areas that you worked in. You were worldwide in, in the scope of your duties. Let's go back and talk about some of those. The jungles of Panama, what what, what was that like working? Well, that was a story and a half. <laughs> the, the work in the jungles of Panama was a new experience for me. And, and at the end of civilization, the road to civilization, there was a river that... Uh, you could take and paddle down the river and then take a path deep into the jungle and uh, that led us to a native village. We were uh, walking along when I mentioned this before, the young man jumped out in front of us and he had a shield and a spear and of course the perspective I had was that the spear was aiming straight for my heart. Yep. <laughs> Those with me uh, tried speaking in Spanish to this young man and trying to explain that we were just there to see how they raised their hogs. He finally believed us and took us to his village. After looking at the pigs, a uh, young woman, a native woman, came up to me and in Spanish said that I looked like I came from the outside world. Well, of course I did. <laughs> Here she was dark complexion and under five foot in height, and I'm six foot four and as pale white as you could ever come by. <laughs> uh, she uh, wanted me to come to her home. She had a recent invention that her husband had made, and she wanted me to take that invention and uh, tell the whole world about it for the women and for their benefit. Of course, I agreed, and soon we were following her down the path to her home. On arrival, she pulled out a table that was made by her husband with uh, twigs and vines, and on top of this, he placed a pile of dirt and then firewood to build a fire. Yes, for cooking. <laughs> Being able to cook standing up instead of having to bend over all the time. What a great gift. What a great invention. And I told her I would tell everyone I met in the world about this great invention. Just one of them. To be sure, that <laughs> put a big smile on her face. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. One of the many stories in the Ark Scargo for the Love of Animals by William Bish. That's B-U-I-S-C-H. His website is williambish.com. Link on to, to get information by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Uh, you talk in, in, when you were in Haiti, Haiti about the uh, the swine industry there. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, in Haiti, the swine industry is made up of individuals usually owning just a single hog and no more. It isn't like the U.S. where they own hundreds of hogs. While I was there, uh, I was fighting a disease called African swine fever. To rid the disease, 
we had to collect all the individual swine and destroy them, which was a sad sight indeed. We allowed each owner to take the meat home for their use and paid them a sum of money for their uh, hogs. The depopulation was successful, and Haiti was freed of this devastating disease. Then a year later, we asked the Haitians to come to the United States at our cost to pick swine to be distributed in Haiti at no cost to the Haitians. This was a very successful program to all concerned. Had really amazing accomplishments in dealing in Haiti. Any recognition that you received for this? Oh, yes, I, I did. Uh, it was great recognition, but I didn't uh, see it as anything special at the time. You see, what they did was they gave me a platter with three pieces of meat about the size of <laughs> one-third of my little finger and as tough as shoe leather. And in addition, they uh, included four uh, slices of potato and five uh, slices of banana, and both of them were rotten to some extent, and then a cup, a small Demitas cup of coffee. At first I thought there was no way that I could eat this, but then I looked at the crowd and saw how they were all sad and looking down, and I realized this was the best that they had, and it was a way of honoring my presence there. The translator asked if there was anything wrong, I looked at the crowd again and, and decided that I would eat every bite, and I ate every bite, whereby <laughs> the, chair, the crowd cheered and cheered, such is the way of an award ceremony in the country of Haiti. <laughs> the Arx Cargo, the book for the love of animals. You received a lot of recognition awards for the book as well, the Arx Cargo for the love of animals. Talk about that, some of the awards that you've received for the book. Well, I received uh, the Gold Seal for Literary Excellence from Trafford Publishing, and I was very proud of that. And well, you should be. That's a, that's a high honor, and it's a, an excellent book. It's filled with, with great stories. Uh, the guest on our program, the author, is William Bish, B-U-I-S-C-H, Dr. William Bish. The book's available at his website, williambish.com, other places, uh, quote, including Amazon as well. When you were writing the book, what were some of the challenges in, in putting this book together, getting the story out to the world? Well, the greatest challenge was remembering all the facts. That was my number one concern. Secondly was to be sure to have everything in good order, every chapter and, and the book as a whole, to have it well organized. How about plans for future books? Because this... Uh, you're probably just tip, sort of reaching the tip of the iceberg with all that you encountered with your, your role internationally. Any other books you're working on? Well, I'm working on a book for diseases in the United States of America. Well, there's a lot of books written about diseases. They're technical books, and I've been part of two of those books that I have written uh, technically, but I'm looking at writing one of with stories, and I think that might be more interesting to the general public. Um, I'd also like to uh, uh, do maybe some novels. I don't know. We'll see what, what comes of that. Well, you're an excellent writer, and I'm sure you would do very well at that. The Ark Scargo for the Love of Animals, the book that we're talking about, do you have any engagements, any any activity coming up in, in book promotion in talking about the books? Well, I don't have anything scheduled right at the moment, but there's a couple of things I would like to do in the next couple of months or years. And uh, that is I would like to work with our laboratories in developing an adjunct to the Arts Cargo, showing photographs of each of the diseases in my book. I think this would add further interest to the book itself. The Arx Cargo, uh, the written word was exciting, but I think a few pictures might add additional interest. I'm also looking at accepting speaking engagements about my book, and I have slides and, and uh, looking at uh, uh, 
working with uh, that as well as uh, uh, looking at, uh, <laughs> well, I'd like to write a romance novel, if that sounds reasonable or not. It certainly and, does. And have uh, disease uh, as part of the uh, challenges involved. Now, that would be good. I was going to ask what's in the future, and you just answered that. You've got a number of activities lined up and uh, activities you're open to engage in. And if you're interested in talking to, uh, to Dr. Bish, and again, he would like to, uh, to travel and, uh, and talk about his book, you can do so at his website, which again is WilliamBish, B-U-I-S-C-H dot com. The book's available there, available at uh, Amazon, the usual places. You can link on directly to Dr. Bish's website by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Doctor, I uh, loved having a chance to, uh, to have you on the program to talk about the book. Excellent job with the book, the award-winning book, The Arts Cargo for the Love of Animals. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it and enjoy doing it. Enjoyed having you on the program and talking about the book. Once again, it's The Ark's Cargo for the Love of Animals. The author is William Bish. You can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program right after these messages. <laughs> 